wow. That's so good. I even saw him the first time I saw him. Like, I almost, I was like, this can't be real. That's so good. But I love that with yeah. all of me. Yep. Welcome to Big South Basketball. That's so funny. What a ride. Yeah, I've seen some, dis I've seen just some disgusting sporting events. Dude, I felt like I was digging deep on, like, random USL bench player highlight videos. But you're on a different level. Yeah. I respect it. Guys back in the studio right now are listening to this like, wow, this guy's just an absolute. He's like, just he is, great. He's, he's an absolute degenerate. Right. And yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I did do a Juco basketball game. It was a Juco basketball game between two of the top five teams in okay. the, uh, like NCCAA. Okay. It was quite possibly the most disgusting basketball game I've ever played. The 2024 Phoenix Rising season is presented by Equality Health. And tonight's matchup presented by Equality Health, it's Phoenix Rising FC playing host to Oakland Roots SC in Phoenix, Arizona. Match day number three, Killian McClatchy and Joe Lowry here for the USL Championship. And Joe, these are two clubs looking to try and figure things out and especially Phoenix still winless on the season. Yeah, Phoenix Rising are trying to pick up their first points of the year tonight after a disappointing loss away to Monterey Bay last week. A big chance to get something on the board tonight against a conference rival. Well, we're going to start with the players to watch. First off, the host and the defending champions, Phoenix Rising. Their guy in the midfield, kind of the motor, Jose Andreas Hernandez. He's going to have to be big. He is. He became a regular starter for this team last season. Maryvale High School graduate as well. Andres, Andres Hernandez had the turnover that led directly to Monterey Bay's goal. He's got to be a little sharper in possession tonight to prompt some of those rise and build-up sequences. One of five players with roots to Oakland Roots, transferring from Oakland as their prior club. Over on the other side for Oakland Roots, it's the guy up top, Johnny Rodriguez, led this team in scoring with 12 goals a year ago. Yeah, he's a lethal goal scorer. Hasn't gotten on the board this season, but again, is their returning leading goal scorer, has the quality to play through the middle or a little bit wider, is somebody to watch out for tonight for Phoenix on the break. Watch out for that right boot of Johnny Rodriguez. Well, we got lineups and kickoff coming up next from Phoenix Rising Stadium in Phoenix, Arizona. There's satisfaction in sacrifice. In spilling blood, sweat, and tears. In knowing that you left it all on the floor and never threw in the towel. Well, except to clean up the mess. Giving it all for your team is worth every drop. Medela, proof for fans with a fighting spirit. Well, it's finally happening. The robots, they're coming. Hi, Amory. Hmm, maybe that's a good thing. She said what? She said what? I was ready like a full 20 minutes before you. What are you talking about? <laughs> it drives better than you do, babe. It does. <laughs> Bye, robot. Huh. How long have you been tracking our car's value with Carvana? Just like seven months. Should we sell it? We hold. Hold. Silver vans are going for more right now. Should we? Oh. Our low mileage is paying off. You think we should? Hold. Depreciation's really heating up. You think? Oh. Oh. We just did 2.5%. Oh. 
Hey, money. Money. Already sold to Carvana. Go to Carvana and track your car's value today. Tonight's broadcast of Phoenix Rising FC is presented by Equality Health, by Carvana, and by Northern Arizona University. Welcome back in. It's almost time for kickoff. Match day number three in the USL Championship. Killian McClatchy and Joe Lowry as Oakland Roots SC is in Phoenix to take on Phoenix Rising. All smiles from the host as we get ready to start this one. As Joe, quickly, it's a windy night here in this one as we're going to show you the starting 11 for the visitors from Oakland. Yeah, Rising are going to have to be a bit careful with the wind tonight, but in general, they want to keep the ball on the ground. We get a look at Noah Delgado's side here with Oakland Roots. They like to play out of this 3-4-1-2 shape with Jesse El Cedeno floating underneath their front two. I'm curious to get a look at Camden Riley in the midfield double pivot tonight. Has played center back earlier this season. Yeah, running a 3-4-3. Three, three. You're going to see a lot of movement from this Oakland Roots club. 1-0-1 one, oh, one so far this season. Here is what the... Host Phoenix Rising have, and Danny Stone still looking for his first victory of his coaching career. Danny's made a few changes tonight. You see Juan Carlos Azocar getting his first start of the season. The same goes with Erickson Gallardo, who will be playing off the left side. And then another change, killing at the number nine spot. We saw Formella, Darius Formella on match day one. We saw Remy Cabral on match day two in that tough loss away in Monterey Bay. And now it is back to Formella. Fascinating shift up top from Danny Stone. Yeah, Formella, another one of those guys previously playing for Oakland Roots. He was the leading returning scorer from a year ago for Phoenix Rising. He scored 12 in 36 matches. He had 10 of those 12, though, for Oakland in his two seasons in the Bay Area. As the lights are off, finally getting ready for a kickoff. As we said, a beautiful night here in Phoenix off the of 38th in Washington. A little breezy, though, this evening, Joe. <laughs> We get a look at the availability report here. Alif Winmayor and John Stenberg, two center backs out for Phoenix Rising. 
Killian, one of the bright spots, though, for Ryzen this season has been the center backs. You lose John Stenberg, your captain, still dealing with a little, a little bit of a lower body injury. You think that's going to be an issue coming into the new season? Not so. Pop Marboy has anchored the center of this back line at a very, very high level. We saw Mo Traore get his first start of the season last Saturday. And Lawrence Wyke has started both games. He's played on the left. He'll be over on the right side again tonight. A really solid trio for Ryzen. Yeah, that was your Spooner availability report. The two Senegal natives on the back line is now it's time for Lowry's lowdown. What do you got for us, Joe? Phoenix Rising have to stay sharp on the ball. The host tonight need to be careful with their possession, building out of the back. The passing accuracy from match day one to match day two inside Rising's own half dropped 9% from 91% completion percentage against Birmingham to 82% against Monterey. Phoenix have to be sharp to avoid those turnovers. And then for Oakland, this game is all about staying compact defensively. They've not had much of the ball so far this season. Talked to Noah Delgado earlier this week. His team is okay to have possession. He likes to have the ball, but only in the right circumstances. And away to Phoenix rising is not usually the right circumstance. They're going to have to be compact and smart as they shift from one side of the field to the other. Yeah, just 37% possessions of the first two matches for Oakland Roots. It's one of the lowest in the league, but still coming away with the four points. The victory on opening night against India, 11-2-1, and then coming away with a draw against Charleston Battery, the defending Eastern Conference champions last weekend. We are finally getting ready to go. Phoenix Rising, the now lone club in the USL Championship, still seeking a goal as Pittsburgh scored one in a last we checked 3-1 defeat as we are underway. A long ball placed in deep looking for Rito. Gets a right foot to it. And it'll be kept out nearly the first corner. Danny Stone talked about it in media availability earlier this week. He wants his team to get this first goal to feel a little bit of the weight come off the shoulders, right? This rising team has attacking firepower. They've not been able to put the ball in the back of the net so far this year. There is a little bit of pressure building inside the locker room, just wanting to put the ball in the back of the net. When that happens tonight, Killian, we could see a little bit of a switch get flipped from this club. And we saw it on opening night a few weekends ago here in Phoenix. They had opportunities. It seemed like they were right there knocking on the door, but just couldn't seem to get one across the goal line. Yeah, and Formella had good looks in that game. Crashing the box, finding space at the back post. Formella is not always a guy who's going to lead the line, right? You see him dropping in a little bit right now, more almost as a number 10. We're going to see him operate comfortably between the lines. The question for Rising, especially without Remy Cabral, who's much more of a slasher running in behind, the question is, is there that line leader? And Rising are going to look for a bit more dynamism, a bit more verticality from Gallardo, number 7, there in the left half space but where exactly that attacking production comes from who's leading and making that first run to the box that is still in 2024 an open question for rising our boy plays one in the middle nice little back heel from formella but he was looking for his man who slipped that was armanakis yeah and that's what formella is so good at is dropping in a little bit and just looking for that quick one two touch bit of combination play and that's what panos thrives on as well armanakis one of the best chance creators in the usl championship this guy can get on the ball on that left foot and make plays happen. He's going to like to interchange and really react to Formello's movement in the middle. Renzo Zambrano lays off Popmar Boy. The rookie who's looked very good in his first two matches, filling in for some of those injuries. As here's Amarnakis with the ball at his feet. And you can see Rito there eager to make the run in behind. We saw that in the last home game for Rising. We saw it even though Rising didn't have a lot of success with it against Monterey. Rito wants to be direct. He wants to run in behind, and Panos has that passing range to hit him in stride. I'd expect we're going to see a lot of play down that right side for Phoenix tonight. Okay, for Azokar. Now here's Gallardo. Gallardo gets himself a little bit of space. Back in looking for Azokar, but it comes down. Hernandez. Azokar. Gallardo elects to play it back. Expect to see a lot of this tonight if it continues the way it's gone the first two matches for Oakland Roots. Phoenix with a lot of the ball. Rito in behind, cross to Ken, sent through, deflected down by Paul Blanchett. What did we just talk about, Killian? It's Edgardo Rito making that run in behind the back line. It's a really sharp bit of play from Rito to find space, to look for this cutback. This is a pattern of play that we're going to see from Rising quite a bit. And who is it? It's Formella who's crashing in the corridor of uncertainty there. The ball doesn't trickle through, but that is a great piece of play for Rising three minutes in. First corner of the night belongs to Phoenix. Left foot sent in the middle of the box, headed up and away by Mishi Nadir Sheri. 
as Blanchette will wait for it and falls into his arms. It's another thing, you look at the numbers for this Oakland Roots team as that corner was presented by Carvana. But you look at the corner numbers for Oakland Roots, 19 to three. Hmm. They are down, did not have a single corner last weekend against Charleston. No, and Charleston are a very, very good team, even hosting the Charleston Battery up in Oakland. That's a difficult matchup to get a point out of that game. Yes, it's at home. Yes, there is a real advantage to home field in the USL Championship. That was still not a bad result for Oakland, who have, in general, done a really good job of securing these early home points. Gallardo with a lot of space in front of him. Right-footed cross back post looking for Armanakis. Armanakis gets back behind it, but just chips it right into the waiting hands of Blanchette. And that play down the left side, Killian for rising, it's a little more vertical. Fede Varela on the bench tonight for Danny Stone. It's been dual tens with Varela and Panos Armanakis operating underneath a nine. That's what we've seen in the first two match days. Tonight, not so. Gallardo is not a 10, he's much more of a winger. We're gonna see him drift wide a little bit. We'll see him run through the half spaces as well, but he wants to actually open up the game and go. That shift with two new players on the left side. Azokar, who's right-footed, Gallardo, who's right-footed, they're going to provide a different dynamic on the wing for Rising. There's Gaggy Marveshvili, Marveshvili. He's now played ahead, intercepted. Rito had to wait up for it. Plays it back in. Formella turns with an awkward-looking pass and is deflected down. And played back up and Rising will retain possession as Traore gets it back. That's one thing Phoenix Rising have been exceptional at. Even in a low scoring season so far yet to put the ball in the back of the net, the back three have controlled games at a very, very high level. These are players who haven't played before. Lawrence Wyke, new player for Phoenix Rising. Potmar Boy, new player for Phoenix Rising. Mo Traore really just became a starter in the middle of last season in August. These guys don't have a real connection just yet, but it looks like they do. They have built on the field together that chemistry so quickly this year. If you're looking for any positive through two games, it is that back three. Yeah, without the captain, John Stenberg expected to have him back here in the next couple of weeks. Same with Alejandro Fuenmayor. So they don't have a lot of really good options on that back line for Danny Stone in this club. Played around in the middle. Physical challenge kept by Oakland. Right all the way through, but carried out of touch. That was the first real sequence we've seen of Oakland being able to put their foot on the ball and string a few passes together. You see Johnny Rodriguez try to open up the game, playing the ball to the right side. This Roots team wants to have a bit more possession, but let's not forget, this team is missing three key players. They're missing guys to international duty. Brian Tamakas, captaining El Salvador against Argentina in a friendly last night. They're missing Navel Hackshaw, who played for Trinidad and Tobago today against Canada with a spot in the Copa America on the line. This team doesn't have all the pieces. They're missing Jose Donaciano off with Burundi on international duty. That's their first choice double pivot for Noah Delgado and a really key player on the right side bombing forward from the wing back spot in Tamakas. This is not a full strength Oakland Roots team. It's not Tamakis. He had the game-winning goal against Indy 11 on opening night. As here come Phoenix. Rito making a run to the right on Armanakis. He gets it off to him. Rito, he's got Formel on the far side. Crossed in, but diving stopped by Blanchett. How many times have we seen this sequence already through three match days? Panos Armanakis with that left foot unlocking Edgardo Rito. Just can't quite get the right speed on the ball across to Darius Formella. Formella is crashing really well. That chemistry and the wave on the pass from Rito, not quite there yet. Manchette plays it in. Tagagi and hey fans. I want to welcome you to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix. As we throughout the month of March, USL will be kicking off across the country. You should join us for all the action on the ESPN and CBS Sports platforms. It's been a good start tonight from Phoenix Rising. They've unlocked Rito multiple times. They've seen some joy on the left side from Gallardo, Azokar, players that are okay to combine, that can work together, can try to cut in on that right foot over on the left wing. The ball is moving at a quick tempo. It's been sharp in possession. That was one of the keys in the rundown earlier. Phoenix had moved the ball well so far through about eight minutes of play. Rito the ball again. Likes to play it back to Wyke. Phoenix very content holding possession. Not shocking 
through these first eight minutes. Traore tries to sling it across the pitch. And a bit of a mystery. That one might have just been the win. It's a savvy play from Bubakar and Jai. Former Phoenix rising outside back. Traded to the Oakland Roots. It's a nice bit of play to just duck in. Make Rito think you're playing a, making a play on the ball and let it go out of bounds for your own throw. Ishii Nadir Sherry and down in some pain after it looked like he knocked knees. And the fans here not necessarily agreeing. A little contact there from Wyke on the knee of Sherry. It's a foul, absolutely. Sherry looks like certainly in a lot of pain. Saw the two knocked knees. Definitely not the most comfortable thing. No, no, not at all. And this is a player in Mish Nadir Shari who is really just getting his feet wet in professional soccer. He's somebody who's been around the game for quite some time now as we'll get another look at this play. See Wyke just kind of clattering his, his ankle there or even maybe lower shin into that right leg of Shari. Hopefully he's all right, still on the ground now. This is a player in Shari, Haitian player, was a part of that Violette team for CONCACAF Champions League diehards, now the CONCACAF Champions Cup, was part of that Violette team that upset Austin FC, not in Haiti, but because of turmoil there in the Dominican Republic, with a giant tree in the background, one of the all-time great CONCACAF Champions League games, two headers in that game. Violette advances past Austin FC, and then they move into the next round against Club Leon. Yeah, that was an electric performance, as you see Noah Delgado, the head man for Oakland Roots. mentioned those two goals against Austin FC to eliminate the MLS club. Tacked on a couple more goals later on in the competition. Yep. Ultimately, Violette was eliminated, but certainly made his name here in the States. And we haven't quite seen him fully bet into this Oakland Roots team just yet for Noah Delgado. He's getting looks up top in that front two with Cedeno underneath and, and Rodriguez to his left. He's a player that wants to slash him behind, Sherry. He wants to be unlocked rather than being the guy who's going to create for others, really even create chances for himself. He relies on his movement in behind much more than his ability to get on the ball. We haven't seen Sherry really find his groove yet for Oakland. Still, it's just early in the season. The long pass looking in for Rodriguez. A bit too far. As Traere to Hernandez. Armanakis. Pestered a little bit by Rasmussen. Former Grand Canyon University Antelope, Justin Rasmussen. GCU beating St. Mary's in the first round of March Madness last night out here in the Valley. Yeah, a lot of March Madness going on. As through ball played in for Formella is coming all the way out as Blanchette. And he clears it out to midfield. I like that burst from Darius Formella giving Rising a little bit of a different look. I talked about it early on in this match. Formella would rather drop in than make that direct run in behind, but adding that bit of versatility to his game makes it much more difficult for the middle of Oakland's back line to track Formella and figure out exactly what his next step is going to be. I like that twist. Nice little movement there, getting away and earning some space. Armanakis once again pushing forward. Gonna lay it off for Rito. He's got Formella in the middle. It's gonna be too far as the wind carries and pushes that one all the way out into the far corner. It'll be a goal kick. It's the third time tonight, Killing, we've seen Edgardo Rito running in behind the back line. The third time that he's failed to find the right pass, and you can see him there on your screen demonstrating this is where I want you. Rising are missing that runner at the near post. Formella doesn't quite crash at the near side of the box, the near corner of the six. Really right where you see the ball there on your screen. Rising need that runner because Rito hasn't quite found the ball to the back post. Why not shift it towards the near side? Reminder, select the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. So with that select ball working up the side, right into the middle. Armanakis again finds Rito. Seen a lot of him on this right side. Laid off Wyke. Thought about it. 
Little one-two, right back to White. Nice find, cross. Blanchett knocks it up. Right foot for Mello, but it's deflected away off the line. Right foot sailed over and into the stands. More progress down that right side for Phoenix Rising. This time it's not Rito who plays the ball across. It's right-sided center back Lawrence Wyke underlapping in that right half space. Plays the ball across. Eventually Gallardo gets his laces through it. Can't direct it on frame. I like that twist, though, from Rising. Getting another player involved in the final third. Oakland have shown no real threat going forward so far tonight. So if you're Danny Stone and Phoenix Rising, why not encourage your outside center backs? Go and join the game. Don't both go up together. But when the ball's on your side and Lawrence White did exactly that, why not go forward and try to add a numerical advantage or create that advantage on the wing? Looked like the Georgian national, Gagi, who cleared that one off the line. Excellent job helping out his keeper. Long run, Rasmussen tries to get to it. He's taken out of position just a little bit as Armanakis tries to get around. Now Oakland, and yeah, they caught it. Njai tried to sneak one past. On the near side official, but he was right on top of it. You and I talked about it before the game started, killing Oakland, missing those key players. We talked about it earlier on in the match as well. This team has gotten four points through two games, but it's hard to escape the sense that they've been a little fortunate in some of the results. Rising on the flip side, less so against Monterey, but in that opener against Birmingham, maybe a little unfortunate to go down and not pick up at least a point at home in that season opener. Now I'm trying to find Jerry in behind, but the flag goes up on the far side. And you're right, that opening night defeat for Phoenix rising, an own goal off of just kind of a shot that Birmingham just sent towards goal, took a bit of an awkward deflection and found the back of goal. In a match that, as we were watching, you could say Phoenix controlled for the most part as the ball placed over the top for Rito, but the flag up and certainly offside. And it's not an excuse for Phoenix Rising, right? It's not as if to say there isn't more for this team to do. You ask anybody in and around the club, they know there's more work to do. When you come out and you want to play a ball-dominant, possession-heavy style, the early season can be difficult, right? The passing accuracy can be difficult to find early on in games. The question for Phoenix as they move forward is how do they turn all of their possession into actual consistent chances in the final third? And through about 15 minutes tonight, there have been a lot of good looks for this rising side. It's been an encouraging start. Gomez on the ball. So right back, played back to the keeper, Blanchett. Blanchett, California native. Led the league in the regular season with saves. Had 114. As he won the Player of the Year award for the club, as well as a second team all-league selection for Oakland Roots. It's a good ball. From Rocco Rios Nova. That's one of the things he brings is that ability to distribute with the right foot, almost adding an extra player into Rising's possession structure. Breaks the line, and all of a sudden, Rising in the final third. Formella has it taken off of his feet. Here's Cherie. I've seen him float from the right to the left side a couple times already tonight. Yeah, he's just trying to find his way in this team, still getting his legs under him in the United States, still getting his legs under him in Noah Delgado's system, looking for runs in behind, looking for the chance to range from one side to the other. Hasn't quite been unlocked yet tonight. Long run in there. Seno plays it ahead. Crossed in, a Sher Sherry just misplayed it. Might have gotten a piece of it with the back heel. NJ was at the back post looking to try and clean it up, but it didn't get all the way to him. And that's what Misha Nadir Sharia is so good at, is crashing the box, slashing him behind, looking for a little bit of space against recovering defenders. It's a dangerous look from Oakland, really their first bright moment of the night so far. Rodriguez. That's going to be a foul on Armanakis. And Rodriguez looks back, has a few words as the two jockeyed for that ball. You see some early fight there from maybe the central attacking forces for both of these teams. Johnny Rodriguez, leading goal scorer for Oakland last year with 12. Panos Armanakis, a key playmaker for Rising. They're going to battle some more tonight on that right side for Rising, the left side for Oakland. Remember Diaz set up with Sedeno to take this free kick. 
of a dangerous area. Diaz puts his right boot, boot through it. Back post. And here's Cherie knocked up and cleared away. Out of danger, at least for the moment, as Gallardo gets ahead to it to send it back towards midfield. It's good set piece defending from Phoenix Rising, not taking any chances. They can't quite connect on the first ball, but no chances taken on that clearance. Jai gets back to it and touched, but out, and it will be, it looks like a throw in. And we are going to have a break in the action here, at least for a moment. It's going to be a fasting break. Something the USL Championship has been big about as Ramadan taking place this year between March 10th and April 9th. As there's Popmar boy, Mohamed Traore. Two of the players from Phoenix Rising getting a little bit of a snack, something to drink. No food or drink from sunrise to sunset. So a big initiative this year from the league just to give these players an opportunity to kind of catch their breath, get a little bit of food and water, anything they may need into their system during this match as there is the rookie Pop Mar boy. Certainly a cool thing to see these two out there manning the back line together, both from Senegal. Both grew up, born in Dakar. Priori played 24 matches a year ago, making his 51st start over the last two seasons at the USL level. Mar Boy, the college standout at Clemson elected to pass on the MLS Super Draft and sign with Phoenix. Go a little bit of a different route as there is Danny Stone, the boss. So that record 0-2-0 certainly wants to put a one in that first column. And you could see him right there. I'm no lip reader, but he said keep the energy up. And you have a little bit of a break. You want to continue to keep the pressure up for Oakland. Rising, moving the ball well, creating chances, finding joy really down both sides, especially down the right. It's a nice combination play on the left as well between Azakar and Gallardo. You want to keep that intensity up as you near the halfway point of this first half. So a long throw, and they're going to say it was a foul on Formella, so it'll be another set-piece opportunity for Oakland. There's that long throw. Formella, a little bit of a shove there on Camden Riley. Starting in midfield tonight, I think Riley's at his best at a center back spot rather than a little higher up in midfield. He's had experience playing in both of those spots, but his frame and his technique makes him more dangerous as a deep lying distributor in that back three. This thing Riley having to play in this position as Diaz puts it again in the back post, but elevating high up was Marboy. Now Gallardo as Andreas Hernandez comes flying in to take possession. Down Zambrano gets to it. Having played around. And here's Cherie. Lays off. Crossed in. Back post. Rodriguez. Nobody's around him. But he couldn't get the header on goal. That was a dangerous opportunity for the leading goal scorer a year ago. This one chipped ahead one more time. But White does a good job to shoulder off. And it goes out for a goal kick. How good was that, Killian, from Phoenix Rising's back throw? You see Pop Marboy manhandling an older player, Mishma Deer Shari, 26 years old. Marboy has no problem holding him at the corner of the box there, and then Lawrence White using his strength to shepherd the ball out of bounds. Marboy taking a moment. That fasting break as well, so that time. It will be added on at the end of the half. So I'll just continue to play another 60 or so seconds, including any stoppage time that needs to be added on. 
this is the moment to get back into rhythm, to get back to moving the ball quickly from one side to the other. Find Lawrence Wyke on the right side, maybe have him push forward a little bit. Rising have to keep the energy up. We saw it from Danny Stone as they look to get on the board for the first time in 2024. Fiore, back to Marboy. Knocked down by Sedeno. Just pestering up top. Yeah, I was just going to say, Killian, we're seeing Oakland be a little more adventurous after the break with that line of confrontation. Out of the opening whistle, we saw them drop super deep. They're in this back five, and they still are, but they're willing to venture a little further forward, which is not always a bad thing for Ryzen. They struggled with Monterey Bay's press. Last Saturday, it was Jose Andres Hernandez giving up the ball for Monterey's only goal and one of their only good looks of the evening. Played through. Rodriguez, one-on-one, -on -one, but he tried to send it over to his striking partner. And Mishi Nadir Sherry, maybe a little too unselfish as it's time for another Carvana corner kick. Oakland starting to grow into the game a little bit. To finish that point, they've been willing to step higher up the field. They're willing to try and put a little more pressure on Rising, which is not a terrible thing if you're Danny Stone in this Rising squad because you want to have space and behind to run into behind that Oakland Roots back line. On the flip side, it gets Oakland physically closer to goal and makes transition looks like that one a little bit easier to find. Sedeno and Diaz, the two men once again. Obi Diaz. Diaz launches this one across. Long run and really nothing coming of that corner. And remember, when it comes to a sports injury, the unknown can be unsettling. If there's one thing that, that can calm that uncertainty, and it's an answer. Mayo Clinic uncovers answers every day through exploration, teamwork, and innovation. And answers that can lead to more answers to find a path forward. So if you're looking for answers related to a sports injury, you know where to go. Learn more at sportsmedicine.mayoclinic.org. It's a great touch. Man, that's a great touch from Armanakis to try and open the game up. The ball doesn't quite find Rito, but adding a sense of calm to possession for Rising as they struggled to really break through some of this pressure over the last three or four minutes. Sent into the center. The captain, Camden Riley. Like spinning around. A little fancy there from the defender, Justin Logue. Riley. Plays off. And Jai. Got Cherie off to his left. Rodriguez to his right. Takes a shove from behind, but no foul. And Jai. Turned around immediately looking for it. Now this one stretched to the far side of the pitch. It's a great ball from Amanakis. I'd like to see Rising move with a little more purpose in the transition moments. They win the ball you know, in their own third. That's an opportunity where Oakland are stretched. You're not going to see that a lot in this game. They're still going to end up playing against the ball for most of the match as they have through the first two games of the season so far. Rising not getting enough bodies forward quickly enough. Amanakis makes a nice play looking towards the left side, but not enough bodies moving into the attack. Gaggy lays off to Logue. Mentioned this defensive unit. His pass intercepted by Wyke. Down a couple of key players. And Brian Tamakis, Neil Hackshaw, both out on international duty this weekend. You can see how narrow the midfield two are right now for Oakland. Panos Armanakis looking for the ball, a little frustrated that he can't receive there from Wyke. The ball doesn't come. You see how much space there is now in the left half space. You see Erickson Gallardo tucking inside, trying to find space. Armanakis doing the same thing on his side. Look for Rising to really target those areas outside of what is a narrow midfield two, especially as Oakland step up higher up the field. That one intercepted, knocked down. Played down to Riley. Tries to get it down to the feet. Sedeno lays it off. Rodriguez, right foot, low cross, and Marboy elects to just clear that one out, and it'll be a throw-in. The intensity's dropped for Phoenix since that break. They've not had quite the same energy and effort on the ball as they tried to build forward. Oakland having a little more joy. Not a ton of clear-cut chances for Noah Delgado's team just yet, but they're having looks in the, in the final third, Rising's own defensive third, that just weren't there early in the match. Thought it might have been a handball, but cleared all the way back out to midfield as Formella tried to intercept that Rasmussen header. Down 
one flying in. Now Armanakis has a chance to spring retail if he can get it to him. Nice little ball off the outside of the boot. Late ahead, Phoenix has numbers. Crossed, Rito at the back post, headed down, but not enough behind it as Blanchette corrals it easily. That is a fantastic transition attack for Phoenix Rising, and it all starts on the outside of Panos. Armanakis' left foot gets the ball over to Gallardo on the left side. Rito crashing on the weak side of the box, gets his head on it, but not quite enough power to beat Paul Blanchett. And that's one of those things that you're going to see with Oakland. They start to move a little bit further up, a little more susceptible yep. to that counterattack. Well, and that's what a lot of possession teams want. They like to lull you forward. You see this all around the world. We see teams literally put their foot, the bottom of their foot, on the ball, waiting, waiting for the opposition to come forward. That then creates space between the lines. That creates space behind the opposing back line. Rising want to knife into that space, and they did it really well just then. for our goal kick. Approaching 30 minutes played here at 38th in Washington. Phoenix Rising Soccer Stadium. Logue has to go and chase this one down. Formella showing a good little burst from the big fella. Laid up, headed down by Rito. Armanakis. Armanakis tried to get a little fancy with it and the late whistle, so it will be a foul and a free kick to Phoenix. Credit to Armanakis, drawing a foul, giving Rising a chance to attack from a set piece. We haven't seen too much of that tonight. His close control, Killian is so good. His ability to absorb pressure and still try and turn and progress the ball, or at least draw a foul, as we saw in that moment, is really, really sharp. Enzo Zambrano to Wyke. Mike trying to place this one ahead. That one split two defenders. I love the idea there, though, killing the balls on Lawrence Wyke's right foot. Panos drops in, and Formella sees that. He sees the, the left-sided center back for Oakland go with him, and that creates the opportunity for Formella to, for, for to look for that space in behind. The ball doesn't quite come off. There's not a lot of space to play into, but those sorts of interchanges where you have the push and pull, right, the seesaw, one player drops, one player pushes in behind. That's smart off-ball movement for Phoenix Rising. San Andreas Hernandez. A little bit of contact on that one. Gets up quickly, though, to keep possession. Armanakis has Rito trying to make a run. He's going to elect to go to the far side for Gallardo. That one crossed in. Rito again at the back post, but Blanchett leapt up and snagged that one out of the air. I've enjoyed Gallardo tonight. His ability to look for that cross to the back post. We've seen it a few times. His vision, it's Azokar, actually, in that moment. Another right footer on that side has played in all sorts of spots this season for Rising. He's shifted all across the front line, has come on as a sub in the first two games, getting the start tonight. Misplayed, Formel, if he can get to it. Right foot knocked down and saved. Blanchette after the misplay, and Formella can't believe it. What an opportunity for Phoenix Rising. A misplay from Paul Blanchette. He does a fantastic job. Quick reaction to get back up, get in the play, extending to his right side, Formella's left. That's a phenomenal save. Formella's gonna be kicking himself. Wow. The reaction from Formella says it all. The first goal in the year, that close, and just a right thumb of Paul Blanchett sends it back. That one headed in off the post. But a whistle. And no goal. Marboy thought he had his first career goal, but it's taken off the board. A little too much contact in the box. That is a great headed effort from Pop Marboy. A phenomenal athlete in the middle of the back line from Phoenix Rising. A danger on set pieces as well. There'll be more of those looks this year. So what a minute of action for Phoenix Rising. Two great goal scoring opportunities. Both taken away, one by the keeper, Paul Blanchett, 
and the other by a whistle. You almost feel, Killian, that the next 13 minutes or so, this is going to be the best window for Rising to snag a goal in this game. It feels like they've got Oakland right where they want them. Oakland back on their heels a little bit. If you give them the chance to go into halftime at nil-nil, that allows Noah Delgado to go back to the tactics board to change a couple of things to figure out the scheme that he wants to go with in the second 45. Rising need to continue to put their foot down on this Oakland squad. Mike replayed it quickly. It's Traore. Marboy. Torito. Traore. Looking around, the defender getting a little involved. Bit of a poor pass and intercepted. Knocked up and around. As Azokar misplays, and there will be a foul. Referee attempted to play the advantage. You have to love the idea from Mo Traore to venture forward into the attack. This is a guy who played as a left back in earlier portions of his career, but his build, his frame, makes him a much better option as an outside center back. He loves to get forward and push into the final third. We see that there with a nice elimination on the dribble. The final ball, though, from Traore, just not quite there. That young duo, the 21-year-old Traore. And the rookie Popmar boy. Seem to get a little more involved in the attack as Wyke heads that one down for Mella. Rising trying to find their rhythm, working the ball from right to left. Bouncing around, in, through, and around everybody. Armanakis. Nice job by Rodriguez helping out in defense. With a long run, Njai. Not there, intercepted. Jose Andreas Hernandez being chased from behind, taken down, but keeps possession. Renzo Zambrano chipped ahead. Rito in behind, but Rito overran it. Not expecting that ball to come through, Edgardo Rito. Thinking Bubakar Njai is going to make a play on that ball. Doesn't quite. The ball trickles through. Nothing to do there for Paul Blanchett. Just feels like this first half for Phoenix Rising. It's been a, a gaggle of missed opportunities for the hosts in red. The chances have been there. The opportunities have been there. There's no doubt about that. The optimistic perspective is the volume of chances has been excellent for Rising so far tonight. Their number of box entries, their number of passes in behind Oakland's back five. They're having good looks. The ball just not coming off the foot quite right to find the back of the net. That's got to change. Minor Phoenix Rising, FC Soccer and the USL Championship brought to you by Modelo. Reward for those with a fighting spirit. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Down Oakland, trying to find somewhere to go with possession. Kept in Rodriguez. Rodriguez, so dangerous with the right foot, scored 10 of his 12 goals a year ago with the right side. Puts his right foot through it, look into the middle. For Cherie, that one headed back down, and Marco Rios Novo scoops it up. Getting a little, getting in on the action after an easy last couple of minutes for the keeper. Can't let him get too bored back there. Now, Danny Stone would like Rocco Rios Novo to be bored. It's a sure defending there from Pop Marboy. Again, a rock in the middle of the back three. White coming up to help out the attack. Armanakis, a little bit of space. Chip back ahead, looking for Rito. Flag stays down. Crossed in. Chested down. Right-footed shot by Formello, but off target. As Blanchette. Very unhappy. With an nearside official, he thought the flag should have gone up. Formella times that volley just right. Way to the ball to dip off the chest. Makes great contact. Just can't quite angle himself to find the far corner. And it looks like we got our first booking is Blanchette. A little wordy with the official. Waiting on that booking in the 37th.
See Blanchett, that look on his face. And he's hearing it from the Benditos down in the south end. Yeah, I was going to say, not the end you want to be on. It's, not at all. Here's a look. As he said, he's letting them have it. He's saying, come on, let's go. A few goalkeepers have hung out in that end unscathed for a 45-minute half here at 38th in Washington. Rasmussen laid off in the middle for Riley. Who slipped. Keep possession, though. Rodriguez. Camden Riley. These are the kind of moments where you benefit from having a guy like Sir Erickson Gallardo on the field. Somebody who wants to streak in behind a bit more. It was Remy Cabral who's drafted into the lineup in Monterey Bay to be that player. Tonight it's Gallardo. They want to try to unlock him on the break. And so Zambrano, Tarmanakis. Back to Zambrano. Nice little one-two. Formella turns. Played through Rito. Good ball. Rito on the edge of the box. Cross back in, right footed shot, Blanchett knocks it down and cleared away again. Phoenix still going after it, crossed in, deflected up, just out of reach, but Rizzo collects it. White going to have to chase it down and play it all the way back, another chance for the hosts. Everything but the finish, Killian, that is an unreal through ball from Darius Sormella, dropping in a little bit. Sending Edgardo Rito in behind the back line. Renzo Zambrano then crashing as part of the double pivot to find the shot inside the 18. Everything but the finish. Jose Andreas Hernandez plays back to his keeper. 40 minutes played in this first half in a nil-nil contest so far. And match day number three. Asil Carr seeing if he can win the foot race. Looked like he did, but now a little bit of a collision and it'll be a foul on Asil Carr. the ball from Formella that finds Rito. Rito cuts it across to Zambrano. Not a goal scorer for Phoenix Rising, but you love to get that kind of action out of central midfield. Puts his right foot through it. It's a clean save from Blanchett. Rising just missing that finishing touch tonight. The looks killing have been there. Blanchett has been argue Pretty unbelievable in this first half. A little shove from behind from White. Yeah, he's been excellent. A solid option in goal for Noah Delgado. Hard to beat Paul Blanchett. Statistically one of the better goalkeepers in the USL Championship last year. Saving a couple of goals above expected. He's done that same thing again tonight. Riley played back to Gomez in the midfield. Gomez, a little right-footed touch. Mishi, Nadir, Sherry, and gets dispossessed. As Formella again. Seeing a little bit more of Formella kind of pestering on those balls being played back the defense. He wants touches. He wants to be on the ball a bit more than he has been for most of this half. We saw him dropping in to release Rito. We see him there trying to really bear down on the ball. Formella wants to get involved in the game. Armanakis, nice job to stop on a dime. Keep possession. Three minutes left in this first half, plus a little extra for the fasting break. And anything else that may be added on. It's good pressure there from Jose Andres Hernandez. Just five foot three, a slight option in central midfield as much. You know, much more in this midfield as a ball mover than he is as a defensive presence. But you like him getting into the grill of Camden Riley. Cherie, nice little one-two. Oakland with a good opportunity. Njai gets it to the left of the box. He's got Rodriguez. Crossed in for Rodriguez, and it was too tall. As the six-foot Johnny Rodriguez couldn't get on top of that one. That's Oakland's best chance of the night. Former Phoenix Rising outside back, Babakar and Jai. It's a 
good idea to find Johnny Rodriguez on the other side of the box. A little too much on the ball. Hard to direct that one on frame. Rising player down on the far side. That's Mo Traore. Looked like he was just cramping up a little bit. Zazo Carl was trying to help stretch him out. Same thing you see Renzo Zambrano. Zambrano actually just making sure the boots are tied. Traore up trying to walk that one off. And folks, it's a new era of the USL and it kicks off in April. To join us on Saturday, April 6th on CBS as Louisville City FC takes on Indy 11 at 4 p.m. Eastern at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville. Kicking off the first ever national broadcast of the USL on the CBS networks. And Joe, that's just, it's awesome to see the USL championship finally getting some of the love that it deserves, the high quality. The exposure is coming to another level this year. Games across CBS, across ESPN networks. It's great to see more soccer, more accessible for fans in the United States. Phoenix Rising fans in a large number of those games. Featured on ESPN family a couple times this year. Same with CBS as well. Sherry, a little bit too far behind Sedeno as Phoenix gets the ball back. And this is the moment to go and transition forward. You see Rito creeping up on that right side, but it takes two or three passes for Rising really to get themselves in gear, go and attack into, into Oakland's own half. It's just not quick enough when the ball turns over. And a booking and down in a heap. All in that left leg. It's a strong tackle from Gagi onto Erickson Gallardo. Gallardo up and jogging again. So they heard on the PA, four minutes. It's Gashi. That booking here in the 45th. Second one of the night. Long run at the far side of the pitch. Nice ball played in through. Gallardo. See if it took a deflection. It looks like it did. It'll be another corner. A Carvana corner for Phoenix. It's a good run out of midfield from Renzo Zambrano. Keying that sequence on the left side. Zobrano's a guy who can push forward. He's not this creative or goal-scoring threat in the final third, but he's an all-rounder in that space, can progress the ball in the dribble, can find the occasional line breaker. That's a good bit of play from him on the left. So Gallardo going to be the man to take this. Formella at the near post. Watch for Mar Boy. He had the last one headed in, but it was taken away. This one crossed in again. Looking back post, can't get it all the way through. They're looking for Wyke. Wyke will watch it go out and it'll stay a throw in for Phoenix. Quick one, Wyke, one touch and makes a knock and now Wyke down after that collision. See the throw in from Rito. Cherie comes in. Not a ton in that. But a foul nonetheless from the Haitian. Cherie and Wank were the ones that collided earlier in the match when Cherie had to come off for a moment after the two knocked knees. So a set piece. Essentially a corner. Crossed in. As Blanchette gets the fist to that one and clears it up and out as Wyke, now on the far side, gonna corral it and plays it back to Mo Traore. As Traore puts that one right into the arms of Blanchette. The distribution from Mo Traore hasn't been very sharp tonight. Line breakers intercepted, 
final balls after driving forward into the final third. Not quite coming off that in swinger. That's an out swinger, excuse me. Right to Blanchett. Arbanakis in the middle to Zambrano. Approaching that four minutes. Stoppage time. Nice little car, nice little move. Keep possession. White. Numbers forward for Phoenix. Armanakis. He was looking for Rito to make a move. Formella. Snuck in behind. A little tug. The back of the jersey. Rito crosses it in. Right foot leaping up. Knocked down though. Great opportunity still for Phoenix. Chip back across goal. Letting it roll right across the back line. Njai, a little touch of class to get it out for the moment. Marboy knocks it down. And here's Cherie, but Marboy fell down. Cherie, right footed shot, and that one was nowhere near goal. It's one of the first times we've seen someone get the better of Pop Marboy. This season recovers and ends up doing just enough to put Cherie off. Another look, <laughs> though, Killian in the final third for Rising with Panos Armanakis pulling the strings. And that's the end of the first 45, and it's nil-nil. Phoenix still looking for that first goal. They had their chances, just couldn't capitalize in the first half. As the two clubs will make their way off, Paul Blanchett, I feel like he's got to be the player of this first half, right, Joe? There's no doubt about it. And this feels like the same script that we saw unfold on match day one against Birmingham with Matt Van Okel. Opposing goalkeepers having excellent starts to their 2024 campaigns against Phoenix Rising. Everything has been there tonight, except for that finishing touch. Rising creating good chances coming off of both sides. Just not quite enough. Formella with look after look. Can't beat Blanchett. It's been the Blanchett show. Even in the close opportunities, Phoenix still unable to find a goal. Nil-nil as we go to halftime. Life happens every day. From small milestones. It's official. To big victories. With online programs that fit your life. NAU moves at the speed of you so you won't miss a single moment. Now, team. Get started at nau.edu slash nau online. Quench your thirst and save big at Circle K, America's Thirst Stop. Soda 12-packs are two for $12 or three for $15. Select 24-pack bottled water cases are two for $7 or three for $9. And don't forget to grab one of our famous Polar Pop Cups that stays cold longer. Starting at just 99 cents. Only at Circle K, your one-stop shop for all your thirst needs. See store for details. There's satisfaction in sacrifice. In spilling blood. Sweat. And tears. And knowing that you left it all on the floor. And never threw in the towel. Well, except to clean up the mess. Giving it all for your team is worth every drop. Medela, proof for fans with a fighting spirit. Well, it's finally happening. The robots. They're coming. Hi, Amory. Hmm, maybe that's a good thing. She said what? She said, what? I was ready like a full 20 minutes before you. What are you talking about? <laughs> it drives better than you do, babe. Who does? <laughs> Bye, robot. Welcome back in. Halftime in Phoenix. Nil-nil between Phoenix Rising FC and Oakland Roots. SC, and we want to welcome in everybody joining us here on CBS 5 in the Valley, following the conclusion of March Madness. Texas falling to Tennessee as Tennessee punches their ticket to the Sweet 16. Little action going here on the pitch, and a little spotlight. Jose Andreas Hernandez, we mentioned the local kid, went to Maryvale 
grew up there, and he went back to his elementary school earlier this week. Baby, back home! Here we are, a beautiful Wednesday afternoon, heading to Glenelg Downs. That was my elementary school growing up. Take the trophy, talk to the kids a little bit, share a little piece of the success that the team was able to achieve this year. My house was this one right here. So where it all started. because I remember being in their seat on the other side. People here in Maryville, in my community, it's, it's pretty rare. Like, realize it themselves that like, all right, like he's one of us and like he did it, like I can do it, you know? Jersey signed by the whole team. It's just full circle, honestly. I know this isn't something they see every day. My parents came here to, you know, better my future, better my siblings' future. Like that's the reason why they struggled, why they went through what they went through, so. I always had that in the back of my head. I made a lot of memories. Do what makes you happy and go for it. Back in, not every day you get to, you know, a kid wakes up, go to school. Oh, by the way, there's a big old shiny trophy hanging out in my classroom. You can see how excited the kids were, Killian. Great to see Jose Andres getting out there, back at his former elementary school. Seems like a great guy. Yeah, certainly a cool moment indeed. We're going to continue on with halftime. Nil-nil still between Phoenix Rising and Oakland Roots. Two kids, guys. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. be honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals yeah we run in the game we're coming in strong and you will not forget it we're here to take you on and we can fight and we defend it we never look Take it higher. Follow up in. Louisville level in the 70th. He puts it in. Indy 11 leads on the road. Yeah, we want to take it higher. Follow up in. Louisville level in the 70th. He puts it in. Indy 11 leads on the road. Looks great. Oh. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. Phoenix Rising are your reigning national champions, and they're fired up to start the 2024 season, so come witness it. Watch your United Soccer League champs go head-to-head -head with New Mexico United, Saturday, March 30th at 7.30, right here in Central Phoenix off 38th Street in Washington, and only five light rail stops from downtown Phoenix and Tempe. Tickets start at just $15. Go to phxrisingfc.com to buy your tickets now. Kickoff starts Saturday, March 30th at 7.30. Back in halftime at 38th and Washington. Nil-nil. Phoenix Rising and Oakland Roots. Killian McClatchy, Joe Lowry. A first half that marred by some big chances for Phoenix. Unable to capitalize. 
still looking for that first goal on the year. 225 minutes of scoreless soccer so far in 2024 for Phoenix Rising. The looks, though, Killian, have been there tonight. Darius Romella, three shots in the first half. Just can't quite find the back of the net. Well, we do have some goals from around the league. I can promise <laughs> you that. We do have some scoring, a lot of it going on from the Charleston Battery. 4-0, big time win over New Mexico United. 1-0 Las Vegas over El Paso in a Western Conference matchup. And a real good one that was played between Indy 11 and Sacramento Republic. 1-1 at full time. Another one going on right now. Orange County and Miami. 2-1 Miami on top at the half. Some of the news and notes from around the league. Minor, that first national game ever on CBS. April 6th on the CBS family. Indy 11 at Louisville City FC. Minor, guess what? We got somebody new coming into the league, Joe. Brooklyn Football Club starting championship play in 2025. And hey, by the way, Open Cup's back. It's been unreal so far, Killian. Upsets galore. You've got Sasha Kleschen coming out of retirement to play for a USL League Two in Des Moines. This tournament is elite. Phoenix Rising entering the Open Cup this year in the round of 32, the defending national champions. Still nil-nil. Lights are on in Phoenix. And we got 45 more minutes coming up in just a little bit. Billy, I need help with the clicker. Yeah, wait, one second, Grandma. This guy's going to buy my car. Billy, you still there? I'm okay, deal, right? you need Carvana. What's your plate number? Boss, M-O-V. Vehicle features, no accidents, right? No. Good. Generating offer. Carvana can pick it up tomorrow. That's an amazing offer. But do you still need help with the clicker? I'll ask your sister. Sell your car the easy way with Carvana. Life happens every day. From small milestones. It's official. To big victories. With online programs that fit your life. NAU moves at the speed of you. So you won't miss a single moment. Mountain. Get started at nau.edu slash nau online. Quench your thirst and save big at Circle K, America's Thirst Stop. Soda 12-packs are two for $12 or three for $15. Select 24-pack bottled water cases are two for $7 or three for $9. And don't forget to grab one of our famous Polar Pop cups that stays cold longer, starting at just 99 cents. Only at Circle K, your one-stop shop for all your thirst needs. See store for details. We mix flavors you never imagined. The result is a smash hit. Two bold flavors in one can. Smirnoff Smash Vodka Soda from the makers of the world's number one vodka. It's not really home field advantage unless you take advantage of it. Great things happen when you spice it up. Tonight's broadcast of Phoenix Rising FC is presented by Equality Health, by Carvana, and by Northern Arizona University. Welcome back. Halftime here, here in Phoenix. Nil-nil, getting ready for the second half of action. Killian McClatchy, Joe Lowry, as... Got some of the first half highlights and stats coming for you as the fans. Just waiting for something to cheer about here, Joe, in this first half. And there were plenty of opportunities, just couldn't capitalize. The fans are hungry. We saw even Lawrence Weick getting into the action in the final third. Right-sided center back for Phoenix. Shot from the right side of the box. Shot from the left side of the box. And this may be the best chance of the evening. Paul Blanchett just whiffs. Darius Formella latches onto the ball can't end up beating Blanchett. And this ball from Pop Marboy, it's a great header. That chance called off for a foul in the box. Yeah, Marboy turned around, thought he had his first goal of his professional career. And then Oakland with an opportunity. It had been few and far between for Oakland as Rodriguez couldn't get that header down on goal. 
Here are some of the stats from the first half. Really, you look at it, if you're an Oakland Roots fan, you're going, oh, I've, I've seen this story before. It's no different, you know? Not really possessing the ball as much, not really getting many shots, but hey, we're still in the match. Yeah, it's been 36.5% possession across their two games. A little bit more of the ball, but just that, only a little bit. It's been a lot of one-way traffic tonight. Killian rising with the better chances, with more chances, with more of the ball. Everything is going Phoenix's way, except the box score. Yeah, those shots on target, 4-0 in favor of Phoenix through those first two match, 21-6. to Oakland had been outshot. And that was just against Charleston last weekend. As you see the banner of the USL champions from a year ago. Here's what they have coming up March 30th, a week from tonight. We'll be right back here against New Mexico United. They're going to look to try and bounce back a tough loss tonight against the defending Eastern Conference champions. And they hit the road at FC Tulsa. And a couple big ones. You got Colorado Springs switchbacks in April. Pittsburgh and then at Rhode Island. A long road trip on just six days rest on that one to close out the month of April. The defending champions still looking for that first goal this season. Looking for the first points of Danny Stone's coaching career. As the two sides starting to make their way back out on the pitch. If you looked at that first half, obviously we've talked about it a little bit. Phoenix with the big opportunities, not able to capitalize. Oakland, really good defensively. They've been making the plays they need to. The keeper's been huge. What are these two clubs going to have to try and do to see if one of the two can find a result? If you're Oakland, you want to continue to sit deep. You want to continue to absorb pressure on that 5-4-1 lower block. If you're rising, it's do more of the same. I've really enjoyed the attacking balance from Phoenix tonight. A lot of the service has come from Edgardo Rito overlapping on that right side. But the left side for Phoenix with two new starters, Juan Carlos Azocar and Erickson Gallardo. Those two players have been involved as well, serving in passes with their right foot on that left side. A double inversion on the left wing for Danny Stone tonight. The balance has been there. The changes have been there. The only thing that's been missing is that finishing touch. If you're Danny Stone, you're not coming into halftime, coming out of halftime, doing anything at halftime and saying, hey, we've got to overhaul our system. You want to do more of the same because same was really, really sharp in the first half, just up until the last moment. Machine at here, Cherie, the Haitian. Wait to put this thing back in play and get this second half kicked off. We are back underway from 38th in Washington. 45 minutes. See if we can't find ourselves a winner here tonight on match day three. A quick little touch. Traore back out there on that back line with Popmar Boy. Gonna have to keep an eye on Traore. We saw him starting to cramp up just a little bit near the end of that first half. You see Oakland not high pressing entirely as a group but being willing to extend that line of confrontation forward that will create space for rising as they look to knife in behind try to get a little more involved here for 60 seconds of this second half you joined and sheer He's loaned out from lafc a year ago That's nice build from Oakland. Trying to get the ball in the foot of Camden Riley. But good Riley pressure from Phoenix. Just whipped at that little one-two just out of the reach of Gallardo. Another big opportunity. There were three red tops there. Pretty much nobody around. And Sedano lays it off. Back Camden Riley in the middle. If you're Phoenix, you'd rather have your foot on the ball. But to be honest, Killian, I don't hate this look for Rising back in a 5-4-1 of their own, having the opportunity to then release themselves on the break after winning the ball. And a little shove from behind from Renzo Zambrano is the captain. Doesn't necessarily agree with it. Stepped on the back of the heel a little. Yeah, a couple of little fouls for Phoenix in the first couple of minutes of the second 45. The clock's ticking. 
But the clock is ticking on finding a goal for this rising team. It's not exactly how you want to start the second half tonight. Another set piece opportunity for Oakland. They had a couple in the first half. Nothing really all that dangerous. This one, left foot back post, and that one snuck through about five or six different sets of feet. It's a dangerous ball in. Slips all the way through from Cedeno. Azokar watching vigilantly at the back post. Cedeno and Sherry almost in unison. Right boot going out to see if they can't find a touch. Going to try and press a little bit. See if they can't find something in these first few minutes of the second half. Zasokar on the near side. Car working his way up. Played off in the middle. Run back. Zasokar back post. Back of the net. Pano Samanakis with the first goal of the year for Rising. Between Manu Arteaga and Danny Trejo, Phoenix Rising let go 32 goals over the offseason. One of the players who is going to be called upon to put the ball in the back of the net at a higher level this year is Panos Armanakis, a chance creator first, a goal scorer second. But by no means is Panos Armanakis incapable of putting the ball in the back of the net. A great bit of left-sided combination play, a lovely ball across from Juan Carlos Azucar in his first start of the year, and Panos crashing in the box. 1-0 Phoenix Rising, their first goal of 2024. Panos hit him with a little gritty for the Selly <laughs> and a 1-0 lead for Phoenix Rising. And this is what we talked about early in the game, Killian, finding that first goal. Danny Stone talked about it in the build-up to this week. This club is looking to get the weight off their shoulders. Now it is. Now that weight is finally off of Phoenix Rising, we could see a few more tonight. The chances... They had plenty in the first half, and finally, on the first big opportunity in the second 45, they capitalize. There's plenty more work to be done tonight, Killian, but I do want to take a second. You just saw him on your screen to give credit to Danny Stone. We see several changes in the lineup tonight. Remy Cabral on the bench. You see Gabi Torres on the bench. You see Fede Varela on the bench. It's the left side with two players getting their first starts of the year, Azokar and Gallardo. That left side has been dangerous. That left side has been dynamic. And you see Azokar on his weak foot. This is a right-footed player playing on the left side, versatile enough, skilled enough to play that ball across on his non-dominant foot for a lovely assist. Mike will play it back to his keeper. Armanakis in the 49th. As rising up 1-0. First lead of the young season. Has a strong tackle and it's going to be a free kick in a dangerous area and now a booking for Renzo Zambrano. It's the right call from the referee killing the ball. Gets away from Zambrano. He has no other choice but to stop that dangerous attack. It's a clear foul and a smart play from Phoenix Rising's captain, veteran, former Portland Timber over in Major League Soccer. It's a savvy bit of business there from Renzo Zambrano to stop that play before it really ever gets started. But this is one thing we talked about just before the game kicked off. Rising have to be sharp. Their passing accuracy percentage in their own half dipped 9% from match day one at home against Birmingham to match day true away to Monterey Bay. Rising can't afford, especially now as Oakland have to extend themselves and have to pressure a little bit more. Rising can't afford more of that sloppiness. We saw it last weekend. Danny Stone's going to want no more of that tonight. So it looks like it's going to be Diaz and Cedeno. Two usual suspects on this set piece. Chip that one over the top. Nice job, though, by Mar Boy. Getting his head to that one. That'll be Triore. Tandem not fully cleared yet. Zambrano 
Touches down to Wyke, and Wyke will send this one deep. It's going to be a long foot race. Gallardo throwing that one into sixth gear. Still runs all the way down there, and now it'll be a foul. That's a pretty easy one. It is. You love the effort from Gallardo to get there. Not quite the right play once he does. That's well done from Justin Rasmussen. Rasmussen mentioned. College standout at Grand Canyon. 27th overall two years ago in the MLS Super Draft by Portland. Sixteen appearances for the MLS club. Saw some time with Timbers 2 as well as Asso Carr. Can't get a boot to that one. Mishi Nadir Sherry has that one deflected down. Kind of bouncing around everywhere here. And that one hard tackle. And it's going to be another booking. It'll be a yellow for the captain, Camden Riley. That might be an orange card to match Riley's hair there. It's a difficult challenge coming in from behind on Renzo Zambrano. It's Riley who loses the ball earlier in the sequence, a center back by trade who's been drafted into central midfield by Noah Delgado tonight because Oakland are light on bodies with a couple of players out on international duty. That one gets away from Riley. Uh, the booking, yeah, you mentioned those three players. Jose Donaciano, Neil Hackshaw, and Brian Tamakis. Three big members yeah. of this club. All out on international duty. Donaciano with Burundi lost 1 0 to Madagascar yesterday. Hackshaw and Trinidad and Tobago lost a big match to Canada today. It was a tough defeat. 2 0, and then Tamakis. Captain of the El Salvadorian squad lost 3-0 in a friendly against Argentina. Contact there and trying to play the advantage. Looks like they're actually saying a foul. It's on White. Maybe, maybe not. Looks like your official was originally pointing back saying that it was on Phoenix, but looks like it will not be. A chance here for Ryzen to get back into rhythm with the ball at their feet. They started the second half well. There's a giveaway. Intercepted by Rodriguez. He wants to try and take a long look at goal. It's a tough one. And remember, you can't watch the match. Make sure you turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. we will see our live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 on the new Sirius XM app. After that play, Johnny Rodriguez is down on the pitch. Fizio coming to take a look at the star striker. That would be a big blow for Oakland if Rodriguez can't finish this second half. He is by far their most dangerous attacking player. Jesse El Cedeno operating underneath can give you a little bit of attacking thrust, a nice bit of vision on him as well. Sharif still hasn't found his footing, has had a couple of bright moments in the attacking half in this game, still trying to get his legs under him in the United States. Rodriguez really is the guy for Oakland in 2024, at least in the final third. He was going to be more important tonight, Killian, without those three players you just walked us through who are away on international duty. If he can't go, Noah Delgado doesn't have a ton of other top clubs in his bag. Yeah, hopefully it's just a cramp for Rodriguez. It's another one of those very injuries. You can see kind of on that upper leg. Not a good sign to see him still kind of hop one off there. Rodriguez was our man to watch for Oakland. Said he got on the ball and just kind of just sent one in the direction of Rocco Rios Novo. And now slowly walking off the pitch. And at least initially, it looks like that may be the end of the night for Johnny Rodriguez. We see Napo Matsoso 
getting ready to come in on the near sideline. Someone who can play in the middle, someone who can play a little higher up, but make no mistake, he will not offer the same goal threat as Johnny Rodriguez. He can get on the ball, smooth in possession, started one game this year. That was against Charleston. Had to come off in the 12th minute. Is now back and healthy again. Noah Delgado's going to hope for a little bit of dynamism out of the Lesotho International. It's also mentioned from Masuru. Started his career at Louisville City. Actually part of that Louisville City club that won the title. USL back in 2018. He played his college soccer at Kentucky. Drafted 31st overall by New England back in 2017. So he will come on for an injured Johnny Rodriguez. Has to come off less than 15 minutes into this second half. Gallardo has that one deflected away by Riley and everybody pointing every which way and it looks like it'll be Phoenix ball. It's good defending from Camden Riley. He knows the scouting report. He's watched the tape. He knows Gallardo wants to cut in on that right foot. Riley positions himself to block that lane. Popmar boy, now Wyke. Looking for Jose Andreas Hernandez. Played that one ahead. Right side with a lot of space. It's in across. Formella with his back to goal. One too many touches. Trying to get back to it and just can't get there. As Oakland will take away possession. And that's what Matsoso brings on the ball. Quick, calm touches and ability to drop a shoulder and turn. Relieve some pressure. You see him deeper, certainly, than Rodriguez was. It's going to push Jesse El Cedeno a little higher into the attack. Sedeno gets tripped up by Zambrano. Oakland are going to be playing with a little bit of desperation. Now, there's not a lot for them to lose at this point as they get closer and closer to the end of this match. Still plenty of time left, but they're going to have to inch forward to look for a few more chances of their own. Sherry thought he was in behind, couldn't get to the ball. So Carr, just past midfield, likes to play it back to Mo Traore. There's space on the weak side for a switch. It's a good ball from Traore, simple, but finds Hernandez on the weak side of midfield. They can try to access Panos Armanakis, the goal scorer, difference maker in the attacking half. I like the quick touches and the quick combination play we're seeing from Rising right now. Allen sent all the way across. Asso Carr, if he can get there. And he does. Left footed cross in, diving. Flying in with the right foot. But not able to get there was Formella. And now Traore with a little bit of a. Late shove, and now writhing around is Sedeno holding that left ankle. Traore looked like with a late step in on Sedeno. Coming after a good bit of play from Phoenix Rising. A nice switch from Amanakis to Azokar. Good ball across the box. Traore steps in. A little bit of a shove there. Don't mind the call from the referee. Daniel still on the ground. What a, what a left-footed ball. A weak-footed cross from Azokar. Great weight, great speed. Really nice delivery from the left wing back for Phoenix Rising. One more look. You see that foul. Sedeno still on the ground being checked by the physio. As Traore ends up picking up a yellow card. It didn't look like killing an obscene amount of contact. You hope Sedeno's all right. Still on the ground. That was one when you look at it, at first glance, especially in full speed, you didn't even necessarily see the feet come together. Mm. Yeah, you see there just real late. You see the shove more from Traore, and that's at least what I caught initially. Well, maybe it's the ankle there and how Cedeno lands. Lands a little awkwardly off of that shove. Maybe twist something, something on the lower body there. Cedeno's still down on the near side. 
So they're working on him. Troy Ure trying to keep him stretched out. Remember he was suffering from well, cramping at the end of the first half. 21-year-old, big smile on his face. Working next to his fellow countryman, Popmar Boy. Sedeno has limped off with the help of the trainer. He's still down there. He's on his own two feet, though, which is good to see. It's still a big blow for Oakland if Sedeno can't get back into this game. Losing Rodriguez, your most dangerous attacker. Losing Sedeno, someone who can pull a few of the strings for you in the final third. The chance creation options for Noah Delgado are dropping. So finally, set back into play. Cherie chested it down, but Zambrano was right there. Zambrano spinning around like a whirling dervish, keeps the ball. What a turn from Renzo Zambrano. Now Cherie, yeah. little grab of the shoulders of Treore, and they, good sportsmanship, little high five. How's that for a bit of break dancing from Renzo Zambrano? What a turn. Played ahead off to of the far side. Riley wants to get the ball onto that right foot. One of the better deep line distributors in the USL Championship. Better in the back line. We've seen a few awkward moments from him tonight. Logue, long left footed shot. He's deflected down. There's another one. That one chipped in back behind, but goes nowhere and shouldered off nicely by the back line of Phoenix. Oakland playing with 10 right now. Still no Sedeno had to come off. being checked out down in the dugout. Traore trying to set Asokar free, but too far. Asokar likes the look from Traore, though. As eFootball 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL championship club. Remember, eFootball is free to play. Go ahead and download it now. And we do see Sedeno back on the field. Noah Delgado can breathe a sigh of relief. One of his first choice attacking options, still able to pull a few strings here over the next 25 minutes plus stoppage time. Still a lot of time left in this match. 1-0, thanks to the 49th minute goal. Off the left foot of Panos Armanakis. First goal of the year for the defending champions. If you're Danny Stone, you also have to kind of think about, we've, we've talked a little bit about the guys that he elected to start, but you've got somebody like, you got Remy Cabral, Emil Quaisho. Fetty Varela. Fetty Varela. You can name all these fresh legs just kind of hanging out, waiting to see if they get an opportunity tonight. They can't try to find another one. Well, and it's starting to feel like, as you see a foul there on the near side, it's Gagi down. It's starting to feel like maybe Rising should bring on a few fresh legs. The game's lost a little bit of its rhythm with, with injuries and fouls just like this one. Hey, Say Andreas Hernandez now. That one just stepped on that right foot. Looked accidental. You know, a little bit of a push on the back just to make sure the defender feels him. I don't think there's anything intentional there, but it is late and it is low. Jose Andres Hernandez. Plenty of 
bookings tonight. Third one of the evening for Phoenix. Got three for Oakland as well. Rising back in their structure. Back in that 4-5-1, we see a no-nonsense step in there from Lawrence Wyke. Trying to get the feel back into this game. A 1-0 lead, not quite enough for Rising to feel comfortable with where they are right now. They're going to keep pushing. I don't like what you've seen from Wyke so far in these first couple of matches of the year for Phoenix Rising. If you're Danny Stone, you got to think Wyke's kind of, this is, you know, you got two, you'd assume regulars out with some knocks in the offseason. Kind of putting his best foot forward, essentially trying to try out for one of these full-time positions on the back line. It's an embarrassment of riches, really through the middle of the field, especially in the middle of the back line for Phoenix Rising. You've got John Stenberg, the captain of this team, out with an injury, Ale Funmayor, and then the three on the field tonight along with J.P. Skears who can play in that spot. A lot of quality. Long run, able to collect it. Oh, Rito. Weaving the way through, nice slide tackle, excellently done by the freshest man, Matt Soso. As Matt Soso on the ball, lay it off to Gagi. Sedeno, good to see him back out on the pitch. Rasmussen. Origagi. One of the things I'm fascinated to watch more closely as the year goes on, Killian, is how this defensive structure evolves for Phoenix Rising. They've been very comfortable sitting back in a very soft 5-4-1 mid-low block. Rarely any real pressing for this team. Curious to see if teams will start to expose that more and more, knowing that they're really not going to get pressed against Rising. And if they move the ball across their own back line, they're going to find openings between Phoenix Rising's back five in midfield four. Like pressing ahead, the defenseman. He's it ahead, little one-two. White trying to make a run. That's going to go out, and it will be a Carvana corner kick. It's the second time Lawrence White has gotten forward from the right center back spot. Usually we think of Mo Traore as being the most adventurous member of any Phoenix Rising back three. Traore's had his moments tonight, but it's been Wyke who's been more impactful making those underlapping runs into that right half space. Wyke, the Englishman, at a Bolton. What? For this corner. This one slung in on the left foot. Blanchett, though, leaps up and corrals that one. He's going to wait for everybody to clear out of the way. It's an easy claim from Paul Blanchett on that corner. I like the idea of the in-swinger. Just not quite in-swung enough. Intercepted by Jose Andreas Hernandez. Chipped ahead for Formella as Formella and Blanchett nearly collided. The two shake hands. Formella, I don't know necessarily if he wanted to shake hands there. <laughs> a little love between former teammates. At least a little left over. Formella. Frontline men, this Oakland Roots Club. Not one point a year ago. Long run. Right in Oakland, trying to find the equalizer. 1 0 oh, 1. Victory on opening night and the big time draw with Charleston Battery last week. Find themselves trailing once again. That's so so. Layoff. That one crossed in, but Corrios Novo going to leap up. First time he's touched the ball in a long while, and he'll lie down with it for a moment. A little too comfortable. Phoenix rising back in their lower block. Oakland starting to have a little more time on the ball, starting to probe in their final third, rising's defensive third. If you're Danny Stone, you've got to be real close to thinking about, can I get a few fresh legs onto the field? Can I get a little more defensive energy? And maybe, as Oakland continue to push higher up the field, can I find somebody who's going to stretch the line? 
more life. In this near side right corner. Nice little move there from Asso Carr. Didn't go out. Asso Carr pressing forward. Gets it off Formella. Formella, long right footed shot, diving save. Deflected out. Blanchett falls on top of it. How's that for a piece of skill from Juan Carlos Azucar as you see the shot from Darius Formella spilled by Paul Blanchett, but he gets himself back on it. Look to me, Killian, like that ball was out of play on the near side. Look that way to the entire right side of Oakland's defense as well. They stop and wait and rising up a chance to attack as a result. Another booking. Memo Diaz. Picks up a yellow. He has another one. Is that look you mentioned? That touch of class from Asso Carr. A little back heel gets around, somehow keeps it in. Diaz, I think everybody in Oakland kind of thought it was just out, so they kind of laid up for a moment. And you'd hope for a little bit more out of that sequence against a scrambling Oakland Roots defense. You'd hope for just a little bit more than a long shot from 24 yards out from Formella. Blanchett finally gets the ball back and tosses it into play. in the midfield. Killian, it looks like we do have a couple of subs getting ready to cut on for Phoenix Rising. That's also Get off there for Daniel Gomez. Matt Soso. Cherie gets taken down. One side of the box, no whistle though. Possibly another opportunity, Asso Carr. Asso Carr on the outside of the boot can't thread that pass through to Formella. He's been excellent tonight, though, Killian, hasn't he? Playing on the side of his non-dominant foot, even tucking inside almost into midfield, switching places with Erickson Gallardo. He's so flexible, so fluid. One of the things you talk to anybody inside the Phoenix Rising front office over the offseason, one of the things that they were most excited about coming into 2024 was the wingbacks. Going out and signing Edgardo Rito to be the guy on the right side and finding Juan Carlos Azucar. You know, maybe they don't know exactly where he's going to play on any given game, although he's made a great case for himself as the starter on the left. We've seen him all the way across the field. We've seen him coming on as sort of a pseudo forward in games that Rising have been chasing this season. He can play anywhere, and we've seen that tonight, even now on the screen. You know, it's, it's, it's him pinched in a little bit, just sort of outside the frame. He's able to play anywhere along the field. It's like Gabby Torres, one of the men getting ready to come on for Danny Stone. Formella. Knocked around the middle, Renzo Zambrano. White, nice ball, played ahead through Rito. Rito with some space, cross back behind, as a car sails it. Boy, would have that been the capper on the night for Juan Carlos Azocar. It's a great ball from Ricardo Rito. Doesn't force one to Formella as that primary runner. Instead, waits for the accent runner, which is Juan Carlos Azocar. Just gets his foot a little too far underneath the ball. That one's over the stands. Scar Cruz going to come on for Oakland Roots. Fede Varela will come in, and here comes the assist man. An excellent night from 77 and red. Juan Carlos Azocar comes off for Gabby Torres. Azocar high-fiving a few of his former teammates. You can't ask for a much better start. Your first start in red for Phoenix Rising than the one that Azocar had tonight. He was excellent, even with a couple of missed chances, even with a couple of missed looks. So influential in the final third. Rising have to be thrilled with his performance tonight. Man 
And on another attacker, Etzgar Cruz. A young 18-year-old coming in for Oakland Roots, trying to see if they can't find a goal as Sherry gets bodied off the ball and it's let out. Another excellent job by Pop Marboy. Marboy's been excellent defensively tonight. Yet again, three strong defensive performances. He's had strikers in his back pocket so far through three matches. The subs, Killian for Phoenix. We see Fede Varela in the left half space. Gabby Torres as the left wing back. It's a like for like change positionally. Torres is gonna hang a bit wider than Azokar did, but really both players filling in on that left side. They'll bring a different look though. They're gonna bring a little bit more control. Torres is not quite the same attacking threat that Azokar is on that left side. And Varela is much more of a through ball threader. Uh, he was tied with Panos Armanakis in terms of chances created coming into tonight for Phoenix Rising. He's more of a through ball threader than this dynamic runner that Gallardo is. Patmar boy, nicely done with the ball at his feet, trying to set up another opportunity. Eddie Varela calls for it, gonna swing it all the way to Torres. Armanakis, the goal scorer. Fede Varela fresh on. Just inside the box, the footwork crossed in, but right into the leaping hands of Blanchett. It doesn't take long for Varela and Armanakis to get comfortable with each other, to find each other, to go and try to combine. Varela, good close control. He tries to hit that outswinger with his left foot. He just can't quite wrap the instep around the ball quite enough to bend it away from Paul Blanchett. Sedeno on the near side, working his way forward. Oakland still not terribly dangerous in the attack tonight, but Rising aren't comfortable. You know, they're sitting back in this little bit of a deeper block. All it takes is a half chance. All it takes, and we saw it against Birmingham, is sort of this, this one moment of magic, of brilliance, sometimes of fortune. And Jaya tried to get a little back forth with Sherry, but couldn't get it through. A second goal killing would do a lot for Rising as they break forward. Possible opportunity here. Pushing ahead. That one laid off. Formella off to the left as going down in the box and no penalty. As Rizzo now a little unhappy is getting right in the face of Logan. Logan a little shove. There is a little bit of contact on the right side of the box for Phoenix Rising. Looks to me like Logue gets the ball there. It's a good no call from the referee. Rito and Logue, little testy moment. It will be a Carvana corner kick though for Phoenix. Might hear the train coming right by here at 38th and Washington. Is that the Panos Armanakis train? He's got one goal already. If he picked up his second here, it'd be wildly impressive as Sedeno and Armanakis having a little laugh together. We see Jose Andres Hernandez down just inside the attacking half. Rising have a couple of midfield options on the bench tonight. J.P. Skiers, we saw start at center back in the season opener, as well as Julio Duratioto. Young player was in the Juventus system, now out here in the desert. Reminder, Phoenix Rising fans, the reigning USL champs, host New Mexico United next week on March 30th. Cheer them to victory this Beautiful stadium here in Central Phoenix. Be there for every pass, every stop, every goal, and every win. Starting at just $15 a seat, there's a place for everyone. Get your tickets at phxrisingfc.com. We are Phoenix Rising. Todos Rojos. Jose Andreas Hernandez going to come off. Me more. Careful with your centerpiece in the midfield. They're going to bring on J.P. Skiers. 
I think a lot of rising fans are eager to see more of J.P. Skears was a standout in USL League One, the third division professional league here in the United States. Born in Nogales, Arizona ties. He's now back in the 48th state. Can range forward out of midfield. Six goals in 2023 for Union, Omaha, and USL League One. This guy can crash the box. Quick one. Right foot high, cross sent in, but knocked down. Left footed shot, headed up and out. What a save. That was the striker, Mishi Nadir Sheri. Biggest play of the match. You see the ball come into the box. Darius Formella puts his left foot through it. Another almost for Formella. Another corner. This one trying to go near post, but a whistle doesn't go anywhere as Phoenix will run back to try and set up the defense. It's interesting, Killian, that Danny Stone goes with Skiers, a little more experience in central midfield than Giulio Doratiotto. Young player coming over from Italy. Stone's been very careful with betting him into this team. We haven't seen him even on the bench in the first two games. He is on the bench tonight. Still hasn't seen the field, though, for Phoenix Rising. Just 19 years old. Hard to blame Danny Stone, even though there is excitement around Julia. Hard to blame Danny Stone for wanting to ease him into play. He's in the middle to Varela, trying to thread one through to the far side. It's a foot race if he can get to it. Rito does cross in as Blanchette slides out on top of that one to make the save. It's good work in the box from Paul Blanchett, but you see there, Formella crashes the box. Who's crashing on the weak side? No one. Fede Varela is behind the play. Gabby Torres is wide. He's not involved. That is one of the issues when you have Varela and Torres, two players that value control over that last finishing touch in the box, much more creators than scorers. It's a little bit of a challenge with the personnel grouping on that side. Starting to get a little rain here now in Phoenix. That one played up ahead. Chested down as the fans run for cover. The jackets start to come on as the rain's starting to steadily fall and certainly not stopping the crowd at that far end. Something about Arizonans and rain, Killian. Not the Banditos, though. No, the Banditos. He, it, you could tell them there was a hurricane coming. I don't think they would. I don't think they'd know. They wouldn't change anything. That one laid in. Now headed down in a high boot up and slow to get up his skiers. And now a little testiness coming. Skier's still down. It's reckless there from Cedeno. Skier's in a good spot defensively in the box. And Cedeno, Cedeno tried to get down and say something to Skier's, and Phoenix did not take kindly to that. Emotions get the better of Oakland there. It's hard to blame them for wanting to get this game back underway. They need something in the last four plus minutes of this game. They want the ball back in play as quickly as possible. Rising on the flip side, this is the moment for gamesmanship. This is the moment where you show a little bit of that veteran nous. Let the clock tick. You know, inch closer and closer to stoppage time. Yes, you want that second goal to really kill off the game. But in the meantime, there's no need to rush. Nice little ball knocked around. As Torres skiers back up on his feet. Good to see him. And now a little shove. Nothing there as Formella thought he drew some contact. Getting a little chippy here in the closing minutes. As Oakland trying to find the equalizer. Armanakis in the 49th. Scored the first goal of the year for the defending champions. The 
This one sent in. Zambrano shouldering off. And White just able to clear it out and send it into the stands. Remember, watch the USL Championship on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golasso Network and ESPN+. Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. Rising back in their own defensive third. The last few minutes of this game will test the resolve of this rising team. A team that's certainly more comfortable in possession than they are out of it. It's a great touch from Mello to release some of that pressure. That's good work. Mello leaves it ahead. Waiting for some help and allowing a few more moments to tick off. Our boy. That one shouldered out by Matsoso. One of the underrated parts, Killian, of what Phoenix Rising do with their attacking structure. They want to use the ball to disorganize the opponent, create goal-scoring opportunities. But that's not the only advantage of keeping possession. Every moment that you have the ball, as we see Rising lose it, your opponents don't have the ball. By definition, it is a zero-sum game. Rising okay to have a bit of defensive possession. That's sloppy play for them to lose the ball on the near side. Marboy backing up his countryman. How good has he been? Killing the one part of his game that's still missing is that real polish in possession. But this is a guy who had legitimate Major League Soccer interest. Chose to forego the MLS Super Draft. Signed in USL instead. A little bit more flexibility in terms of his movement. A little more in control of his own destiny moving forward. But he's a guy, I can tell you, that has caught real eyes and real interest at various levels of the American soccer landscape. You get the feeling not over, not only interest here, yeah. but you have to imagine at some point down the line, you can certainly see even European talent level out of the young man. And it'll be fascinating to see how he develops, specifically that in-possession play, because in the modern game, even teams that defend first and attack later, Rising not one of those teams, by the way, but even those teams do need a little bit of ball playing out of their central defenders, at least at the high levels, maybe not in some of the lower levels over in Europe. But you want to see, if you're playing at a high level, your center backs do it all on the ball, and, and Pop Marboy is already elite through three games. I'm confident in saying that he is elite defensively at this level. In possession, that part is still yet to come for his game. Looks like Traore just picked up a yellow. As we do have official words. Seven minutes added on here, so still a lot of time left. And this one from Phoenix. Danny Stone takes a deep breath on the sideline. Pats Emil Quesho off screen. Quesho was clutch for rising throughout their playoff run last year all the way to the championship where, of course, they took down the Charleston Battery. Coming back in both regulation and in penalty kicks. Quasha will add a bit more energy to this midfield when he comes on. Still waiting to get him on there. So they said that card was for Danny Stone. Sent through, Traore gets his head to it. Formella chests it down, nice job waiting for it. And now a little tug as Formella took a knock from behind, is a little slow to get up. And that'll give an opportunity for Quasho to come on. And it'll be the goal scorer. There's another look, a little touch. But the goal scorer, Pino Sarmanakis, will come off to a good round of applause. Zemi Quasho. Come on and join the group for the last six or so minutes. He's going to be replacing Pino's positionally in that like for like way. Going to be over in the right half space. His job is going to be very, very clear. Be quick to react defensively. Be sharp on the ball. Try to help this clock tick down. And get a chance right away. Quasho touches it down to himself. Gets spun around. A little tug at the back of the jersey. But keeps possession. Quasho still perusing through 
the middle and taken down. And now a dangerous set piece chance for Phoenix to potentially put this one away. Noah Delgado not happy down on the near sideline going over to talk to the fourth official. Hard to tell from that angle. Looks like a lot of ball. We'll get another look at it here. He does catch that right leg. Yeah, just caught a little bit That's of it so, first. So. Yeah, catches a little bit of that right leg on the initial approach. Quaysho goes down. And how good, Killing was that cutting across from right to left, taking time off the clock, looking for the pass over the left side. That window never opens up. Quaysho keeps control, gets himself in a position to draw a foul. The clock keeps running. It's not the question here for you. Do you try and go for goal, see if you can't make this 2-0, or do you play something out, see if you can't spend a few more moments a clock. Yeah, you have to from this spot. You have to take an effort on goal. Right down the middle, you'd almost rather the ball be a few yards to one side or the other. But it's too good of a shooting opportunity and a little too early in stoppage time to try and play this one out. Way show. Two steps back. He's got Skiers off to his left. And Zambrano, the far man. Line being set up, spray, making sure everybody knows where to be. A very tall wall for Oakland. See who takes it. Quasho, left foot right into the wall, chipped up in behind. Blanchett knocks it down. He got just enough of it. As Blanchett slow to get up, as he has to limp back to try and get a ball. Quasio takes that free kick. It sneaks in behind. Gabby Torres gets something on it. Blanchett, no fear there, rushing out off his line. Desperation defending from Oakland. Still alive. get the feeling, Killian, there's one more moment left in this game. One more half chance for Oakland. One more chance to rise and to kill this game off on the break. This one's got a little bit of life in it yet. Approaching two minutes left of the seven added. That one sent into the middle. Chested out. Bicycle kick. But just out of the way. What an opportunity for Memo Diaz. Memo Diaz has been a difference maker in this young season for Oakland. Picked up an assist in his start against the Charleston Battery. That 1-1 draw last weekend. Not an easy shot whatsoever. It goes wide right. Diaz was going for goal of the year candidate here on match day three. A whistle. Is the head referee going to come over? Yellows everywhere. Looks like that one was to Phoenix's bench yet again. Well, somebody on there. Danny Stone already got one. I don't know who else could have collected one down there as well. So Daniel not too happy. Gorios Novos sends that one high into the Phoenix Knight. It down. Really nice play through for Formella, but Blanchett going to run there. Now Formella getting right in the way of Blanchett. And Formella is going to be the one trying to do a little too much there. Some man to man coverage there from Darius Formella. You don't see that too often. Formella will make the argument. I was just making sure he's okay. I just want to make sure he can get up. Matsoso. The feeling this could be the final opportunity of the match for Oakland. That one sent through. And knocked around. Now some contact. Still on the feet, though. Heavy shoulder and contact and a foul. That is great work from Emil Cuesho. I thought he should have gone down with that first bout of contact. He doesn't. He gets back up. 
It would have been a foul there. But Escott Cruz comes in. Referee has no choice but to blow his whistle. A desperation tackle from Cruz. There are a lot of red. Moving up the pitch. As Wyke going to chip this one ahead. Looking for Formell, and it's out. Be a throw in to Phoenix. Danny Stone, hands on his hips, patiently waiting for his first victory. Trying to kill off as much time as possible. Somehow, still the ball at the feet. As it's knocked around back to midfield, Marboy. Right foot chipped into the box. Blanchett going to catch it. Waving everybody forward. Desperation time for Oakland. Blanchett was of half a mind to keep driving up the field himself. Here's Matt Soso. Looks like they're going to give Oakland one more shot. That one's sent down. And it will be a whistle. Marboy boot a little too high up for comfort. That savvy veteran play from Lawrence Wyke, motioning the two younger members of his back three forward so that Rocco Rios Novo can come take this. Pop our boy looked ready to just put that one right back in, but you're right, Wyke looked at him and said, hey, young gun, let's hang on a second. Another whistle. We played nine extra and we're still going. That one, excellent tackle made. And that will do it. Ending on that. The defense held strong and Phoenix finally broke through for that man as Danny Stone's side pick up victory number one of the first three points of the 2024 campaign. It didn't come easily tonight for Phoenix Rising but they kept up the pressure in the final third. Panos Armanakis scores the first goal of the title defense campaign for Phoenix. A nice performance and a 1-0 no win to pick up three points at home. A big three points on match day number three for the hosts as Oakland Roots unable to find the back of the net in the 90 plus. And it's all handshakes and high fives for the men in red tonight. There's the goal scorer, Pano Sarmanakis in the 49th with a game-winning goal, 1-0 Phoenix Rising. We're going to take one more break, and we'll be right back to wrap things up for you from Phoenix. Huh. How long have you been tracking our car's value with Carvana? Just like seven months. Should we sell it? We hold. Hold. Silver vans are going for more right now. Should we? Oh. Our low mileage is paying off. You think we should? Oh. Depreciation's really heating up, you think? Oh. Oh. We just did 2.5%. Oh. Now. I'm on it. I'm on it. Already sold to Carvana. Go to Carvana and track your car's value today. It's not really home field advantage. Unless you take advantage of it. Great things happen when you spice it up. Billy, I need help with a clicker. Yeah, wait, one second, Grandma. This guy's gonna buy my car. Billy, you still there? Okay, just, deal, right? you need Carvana. What's your plate number? Boss, M-O-V. Vehicle features, no accidents, right? No. Good. Generating offer. Carvana can pick it up tomorrow. That's an amazing offer. But do you still need help with the clicker? I'll ask your sister. Sell your car the easy way with Carvana. We mix flavors you never imagined. The result is a smash hit. Two bold flavors in one can. 
Smirnoff Smash Vodka Soda from the makers of the world's number one vodka. Welcome back to Phoenix, where Phoenix rising with a 1-0 victory over Oakland Roots. Thanks to that man right there in the neon yellow boots, Panos Armanakis with a big time goal. The first of the year, picking up a big three points to officially try and get this title defense campaign underway for Phoenix Rising. Killian McClatchy here with Joe Lowry. It was a match, a little back and forth. Phoenix, they had their opportunities in the first half, just couldn't necessarily capitalize, but finally broke through in the second for the first time this year. And it really did feel like that breakthrough was coming. It felt like that was going to happen against Birmingham on match day one to open the year. It never came. It really never felt like it was going to come against Monterey Bay. But tonight, with look after look in the first half, some really nice moments, including this goal. Such lovely play from Phoenix Rising leading to Panos Armanakis crashing on the weak side of the box. This ball across from Azokar is so clean. Armanakis getting a little gritty for the celebration. Lovely piece of play from Juan Carlos Azokar. You can't say enough about the night that he had. Overall, just great. Had the assist, had an opportunity to score. That was another near assist opportunity for Azokar. But picking up this victory as some of the final numbers on the night. The possession numbers ticked up in that second half. Oakland Roots, they did a much better job possessing the ball, just didn't really get any chances. No, they struggled tonight without three key players away on international duty. And when you go down just a few minutes into a half, you have no choice but to try and grow into the game. It's not exactly what this group has done well under Noah Delgado in 2024. Four points coming into tonight, a goose egg from tonight. Yeah, you get the feeling if you're Danny Stone, you like the performance from tonight, but there's still a lot left to be asked for. And Rocco Rios Novo picks up his first victory on the year in net. A 1-0. Phoenix rising over Oakland Roots. An excellent night for soccer. Had a little rain at the end of the evening. But didn't scare us away. Didn't scare away Just any of the tease. players. Just it certainly tease. was. Well, an excellent evening. Big thank you to our entire crew here. Gregson Frampton back in the Bitfire studios. For my partner, Joe Lowry, Killian McClatchy here signing off for the evening. 1-0, Phoenix Rising. Picking up, win number one on the year over Oakland Roots.